Axum Cloud Components allows building pixel-perfect UI designs using the inbuilt component builder as well as the design system. UI designers and front-end professionals can transfer the styles they use in the design tools of their choice into Axum Cloud Components so that marketers can create components matching the brand style guides. In this video, I would like to show you how to work with Axum Cloud Components as a UI designer. Marketers want to be able to build components based on the brand guides. So let's have a look on a concrete example, the text teaser component. The text teaser component comes in a two column layout being centered with a max width of 1320 pixels. Within the first column, there is a headline H2 and a headline H3 element. In the second column, there is a paragraph text with formatted text. So probably something that can be handled by a rich text editor. The fonts being used is Roboto for the headlines and Open Sans for the paragraph text. Let's have a look at the component in the XM Cloud Component Builder. Being in XM Cloud, I navigate to Tools and Components. The text teaser is listed here already. Let's go to the edit mode. The component in the builder consists of several elements, starting with the section which describes the main canvas. The component uses cards to separate the design into two columns. In the left column, we use text elements of type Heading 2 and Heading 3. And in the right card, we have an HTML block element that shows formatted text from a rich text editor. There is also a mobile version that uses a block element as a wrapping div. Inside, the cards containing the headings and an HTML block are stacked underneath each other. Both versions do not look exactly as they should. We need to get to know the different types of elements and the styling options we have. To change the styling in XM Cloud Components, we can navigate to the Styles section. The section provides the ability to gradually work on the component styles from top to bottom. So, first defining very basic styles, like the fonts, the colors, graphics or breakpoints we want to use. Then go over to define typographies, decorations, fills and spacings. Next, we apply these to the UI elements like text, inline or block elements. And last, we can collect all that in themes. First, let's work on the fonts. We need the Roboto and the Open Sans font. As I can see, Roboto is already added as font library. Also, the font weight 700 is selected that we need for the H2 headline. Let's edit the font library to add the missing font weight 500 for the headline H3 and save it. Open Sans is currently not added as font library. So let's add a new font library and search for Open Sans. There we go. Out of the available font weights, we select 400 for normal text. Please note that currently only Google fonts are supported. This will be extended in near future. As colors, we currently only need white and a darker gray for the text. Again, there are already predefined colors organized in collections. We create an own collection and call it Company. In there, I add a new color. I name it White. The hex code for White is already set as default. As you can see, I could also set an opacity here. And based on the name of the collection and the color, I see the class name being generated. Save and close. Now I add the second color, which I name Font Gray, as I will use it particularly for my text. I copy in the required hex code. As you can see, if the hex code is not valid, I get a validation error displayed. So let me delete the blank, save and close again. We'll skip the graphics for now. The breakpoints are preset and based on bootstrap breakpoints, which was also used for the website design. Now let's define the typographies. There are some typographies set as default already, but we will now create the ones we need in a dedicated collection. So I create the collection and name it Company Typography. Save it and close. In here I will create the typographies for headline 2 and 3 as well as the paragraph. 
On the Details tab, I set the name to Headline 2. I could add some notes or change the collection here again. On the Font Type tab, I select Roboto Bold 700. On the Size tab, I select the font size as 42 pixels. The letter spacing remains unchanged. The line height is set to 60 pixels and I leave the paragraph spacing as unspecified. I do not specify the icon size for now either. I set the case style to uppercase. I could add another font size group for different breakpoints, but my design does not foresee that at the moment. Next, I create the styles for the H3 headline. On the Details tab, I give my typography the name Headline 3. On the Font Type tab, I select Roboto Medium 500. On the Size tab, I select the font size as 24 pixels. I leave the letter spacing as is and I set the line height to 32 pixels. I set the paragraph spacing to 20 pixels so I get some space in the mobile version. Last but not least, I set the paragraph text. On the Details tab, I give my typography the name Normal Copy. On the Font Type tab, I select Open Suns 400. On the Size tab, I select the font size 16 pixels. Done. So we do not need decoration at this stage, so we skip that part. However, the component has a white background, so we will add this as a fill. I create a new collection again to keep all my required fills together. I name the collection Company Fills. Save and close. Now I add the fill. I give it the name White. On the color tab, I select that I want to use a color and choose the color white that I defined before. I could set an opacity here again. Even though I'm not requiring a gradient, I could set this here by using two colors and the angle and also opacities for both colors. On the effects tab, I could set a blur effect that I do not require as well. Save and close. In the spacings, we also have default spacings as example, but we will create the ones we need in the dedicated collection. I name the collection Company Spacings and save it. To close it, I scroll up and close. Now I can add the spacings. First, for the section. I call it Section Spacings. On the Spacings tab, I can now set paddings and gaps generally or more granular and define the horizontal gaps and spacings as well as the vertical gaps and spacings on the side tab. I'll choose 60 pixels vertical padding and save my changes. So let's close the section spacings and create the ones for my cards. I'll provide the name card spacings and set the horizontal padding to 12 pixels. Save. Not to forget, on the All Custom tab, I could define even paddings for each individual side. So let's close the card spacing and create a general spacing that can be used for spacer elements. I name it Paragraph Gap. I set the vertical gap to 16 pixels, save it and close. Now I can apply the previously set basic styles and rules to the actual elements I'm using in the Builder UI. Again, the text elements have already predefined values, but you'll also notice that here we do not use collections anymore to group the different text elements, but text elements itself built in groups. So let me add first the desired paragraph style. I'll provide the name Company Paragraph. On the Typography tab, I choose the previously set typography name Normal Copy. On the Text Color tab, I choose the previously set Font Gray. Save and cancel to go to create the next style, the Headline 2. I'll provide the name Company H2. On the Typography tab, I choose the previously set typography named Headline 2. On the Text Color tab, I choose the previously set font grey again, save 
and cancel to go to create the next style. The headline 3. I'll provide the name company H3. On the typography tab I choose the previously set typography named headline 3. On the text color tab I choose the previously set font gray again and save and cancel. In the inline element section I could set the appearance for links, buttons and badges. However, this is not required for the current component, so we'll skip it at this point. In the block element section I want to set the styles of my card. So I add the card style, provide the name company card, select the previously created fill white and the card spacing I set before. Save and close. Last but not least, I also want to set the section style. I name it Company Section and select the previously created spacing, Section Spacing. Save and close. We reached the bottom of the styling workflow to set up the theme. The theme combines all styles of elements we want to use, so later in the Builder UI we can either choose each element style or directly apply the theme and stay consistent within our brand UI guide, with a minimum number of clicks. So I create a new theme which I name Company Theme. Now I can select the styles of elements that should apply for this theme. For the block elements I select the section I previously created, which is the Company section. For the card, I select the previously created company card. Switching to the text element tab, I select the company paragraph. We skip headline 1 and set headline 2 as well as headline 3. Save and close. Now we have created the styles and the theme with all that is required for the text teaser component. For sure, we not only created the styles for a single component. This is the basis for the style guide we can use for all our XM Cloud components that will be built with the component builder. Styles follow a workflow. To make changes visible, I need to stage the styles. To make them publicly available, I also need to publish the styles. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, XM Cloud Components detected the change and reminds us to stage and publish the changes. When I click on Go to Style Publishing, I'm switching directly into the Publishing section. I could also go there through the main navigation. From here, I can directly stage the styles and publish them right after. Now, let's go back to the Component Builder to apply the theme and check the layout. On the default version, the light theme is applied at the moment. I switch that to Company Theme and the component looks instantly like the one I plan to create. I directly restage my changes to make them available in Pages. I repeat the steps for the mobile version as well. Restage it. Done. Let's check the component in Pages. Therefore, I'm going back to the XM Cloud dashboard and I click on the site tile. I directly land in Pages on the home page where this component is used. It looks good. Let's check the mobile design as well. Looks great. To summarize, we transferred all necessary styling to XM Cloud components to make the component look as required. Of course, setting styles is a one-time activity and will be reused for other components. Please note, other components might require additional styling that we need to add to the XM Cloud components. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover SiteQuiz channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.